בוריס גילטבורג, שלום. שלום. Welcome to Culture Buzz. Thank you. בוריס, we are the ones who should thank you after a marvelous recital here in uh, Savion. It was totally my pleasure. Uh, a Russian program. A totally Russian program uh, with two big programmatic pieces, uh, Tchaikovsky The Seasons and Mussorgsky Pictures and Exhibition. A masterpiece. Both. Both of them. Both masterpieces. Uh, very different. Both written almost at the same time. Amazing. Around. Yeah. Amazing. And we have learned after the, or thanks to the nice discussion you had with uh, Edith Zvi of the Arthur Rubinstein uh, Association, that you are a multi-talent. Well, kind of, a multi, multi-interest, I, I say. So, I know. It's, um, it's... It's languages uh, and linguistics in general, translating, and as of late, also photography. So, all of that together. And if I'm not wrong, you also write, but for the drawer, as we say. Um, I... no, I... no, 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 um, I... well, I do. A bit, but that's not to mention. Okay. Uh, but I do write, f- I have a musical blog where I write uh, detailed listening guides uh, to various pieces of, of classical music for non-musicians, for those who have no, no knowledge, Fantastic. but who are interested in this. So I'm trying to give them the, the tools to deal with this sometimes. So not, so, easy to do. so not only a great pianist, one of the best Israel can offer today to the world, Thank you. and we'll talk about it uh, soon, also an educator. Well, I'm trying because um, classical music is my big passion, my big love, and I'm, I want to share it with as many people as possible. And the thing is that things that, um, f- for a long time, I was trying to convert my friends who are, um, who are computer geeks and who are science fiction fans, like, like me. Um, I'm, do- I'm, I'm, I'm a total computer geek as well. So I was trying to convert them to classical music and it didn't work really because I was just just putting my favorite pieces and letting them listen and it just didn't work. Then I realized that there is sometimes a barrier which someone without the right tools just cannot cross or it's more difficult uh, for him to cross. And then I had an idea of writing a very detailed analysis, like really second by second, play by play, wow. of what's going on in the movement of a Bach cantata, and it worked for the first time. Excellent. I, I sent it to my friends, and they said that they could follow and really and enjoy it. Yes. So if you th- manage to convert <laughs> the geeks, <laughs> so this, I'm, uh, this is. A <laughs> so I I'm I'm doing that. So I have I think eight or nine listening guides at the moment, and Wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm adding to those. So all we need to do is to go to Google, write Google, Boris Gilberg, and blog. And it's called Classical Music for All. Hey. And, okay. and it's there. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Boris, I wanted to ask you a, a question that might be unfair, so I apologize in advance. All right. Uh, it might be even uh, unpolite oh. to ask an accomplished performer such as yourself if he has favorites. Do you mean performers or... Performers, pianists, composers. Composers. Well, I'll start with the composers because it's an, it's an easier question. Um, there are two big groups of composers I love. Those are the Germans and the Russians. So it's a very wide spectrum. Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, Schubert, Haydn, uh, Mendelssohn, Bram, Schumann on the one side. And Prokofiev, Rachmaninoff, Shostakovich, Tchaikovsky, Mozart, Kyrgyzsky, Korsakov, Stravinsky on the other. Forgive me for interrupting, but when you say you like, it means they are on your repertoire. Yes, I'm... All, almost always including works from both groups in the recitals and, and sometimes like today it's, it's, it's a pure German or a pure Russian recital uh, though I'm slightly omnivorous also so I, I'm adding some French music and Liszt and uh, Chopin but these are the two main pillars. Um, performers um, I said that m- most of my f- favorite performers would be either uh, either already dead or quite or among the older generation today uh, my absolute favorites are um, Arthur Rubinstein, uh, Gilles, Richter, um, Horowitz also um, from those alive today uh, Barnbo and Parayashiv for the especially for, for the German classics um, Grigory Sokolov uh, is a very big favorite of mine um, um, I could, I could do on. And uh, what about Israeli composers? Um, I, I've played quite a few works. Um, 
mostly by Tzvi Avni, whom I really love, uh, but also by Ben Haim, uh, by um, a Jewish Israeli composer called Stuchevsky, not very, not very known, but some lovely Jewish music. Uh, Daniel Galai, also that's 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 a Jewish part. Um, whom else? Well, that, that that would be the main thing. But but Avni, I'm playing uh, quite often. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong. Your first teacher was your mother. Yes, though she was very much against it. I had to bend her hand, uh, <laughs> bend her arm. She, um, I'm coming from, from a family of, of, music, of musicians. My mom is a piano teacher, my grandma is a pianist and a piano teacher. Ah. She still works as a, it's as a, a dynasty. It's a dynasty. And my great-grandmother was also a piano teacher. Amazing. So when, uh, when um, as it seems, when I was five, I asked mom to teach me. We always used to have a piano at home. So I asked her to teach me. She really did not want to. She, she said we had quite enough pianists in the family and that I should be doing something else. But apparently I was really stubborn and I insisted and I insisted until at some point... You, you, you know, it's interesting because normally it's the other way it's around. It's the other way around. I think the way, you know, um, I'm often asked how mm. can we pass what you know that there are often conflicts of you know, mother-son and that it's not an easy thing. But I think because it came always from me, because I was the one who pushed um, I, n I was never forced to do it, and I think that's that's how mm -hmm. we managed to, mm -hmm. to to make it work. Wonderful, and uh, I know that you are touring extensively, well, all over the, the world, the all over years, the yeah. world, because we are following your career uh, with great admiration. I Thank must you. say. Thank you very much. All over the world, playing in the best venues with the best of orchestras. It sounds very demanding. It is. N not only physically, but also mentally. Yes, though it's also very rewarding. Um, well, the, um, I must say that there is almost, or at least not much difference in terms of uh, anxiety before a concert between a very big and a very small hall. Because if you approach every concert with responsibility, if you think that the audience who came to listen to you today, they will not hear you in another hall. But they don't know that next week you might be playing somewhere else. They came today and this is the concert that they are going to hear. So you must give your absolute best every time. So on the... On Make or break situation. On the one hand it sounds like it's a bigger challenge, but it's actually easier to, to try to play your best. Because if you are allowing yourself not to play your best, just to do, you know, a mediocre, all right concert, then you... Your, your own satisfaction is, is one third or one quarter or one fifth of what you would get after a real, real concert. Which is unacceptable. So, it, um, will be, it will be betraying your mission. So, uh, so I think that on all counts it's, um, it's beneficial to everybody when, when, when the artist is trying to do his absolute best every time. And this is fantastic news for all your audiences all over the world. Well, they know that they can only expect the best from Boris. I'm, I'm trying, you know, um, every day is different. We have a different hall, a different piano. We are in a different mood. We're in, in a different physical state. So, and even, I think that if you take the same conditions, you know, a series of concerts in the same hall day after day, so same piano, same hall, same, con same repertoire, still you would get different in, interpretations f from day to day of course. because it's just it's just different you the flow of time is different every time you get different ideas the music suggests different things to you every time and you just follow mm -hmm. yeah now we have told we have spoken about Boris the performer Boris the translator and we can go on and on but I would like to ask you about uh, your new hobby, photography. Oh, photography. Oh, that's the wrong question because I can now talk for hours <laughs> about this. Um, I also I'll start with with shameless advert uh, self advertising. It's guide. allowed. I also have a photography blog, and it's much more accessible than the classical. How music do we blog. find it? Uh, it's called a photo a day, uh, and also if you write Boris Gilbert photo blog or Excellent. whatever, it's there. Excellent. Um, it's photos from my travels, but also lately I started adding photos from Israel. So um, some some nice stuff from Israel as well. I, I Wonderful. Um, Boris, what about composing? Composing. Um, it's premature. 
No, no, it's too late. Uh huh. Uh, because if I had any talent for composing by this time, it would have manifested itself somehow. Mm -hmm. And since it hasn't, I assume I do not. Okay. Uh, and conducting? Is conducting, conducting, conducting an option? Conducting, I'd love to learn one day. Because um, I always say that um, the piano has the second best repertoire after the orchestra. <laughs> so the orchestra, well, or, or they're very close, but, but the richness of the, of the repertoire uh, that, 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 that the orchestra has, it's, mm -hmm. it's incredible, you know, those symphonies, those, those big works, it's, it's great. Boris, it's almost inevitable to conclude this uh, nice conversation we had with the following question. You have accomplished so much, uh, despite being young. So, what can we wish? Boris Gildburg for the future? Well, I'd, musically I always see it as working on two, on, two, on two levels. One level is my personal musical advancement and that's something you know, only I can push myself forward and um, you know, never to be satisfied or almost never to always feel that there is a long way still to go. Um, learning a new, new repertoire, working on old ones, getting new views on things, that's one part. The other part is the career thing, where we can wish that things would, uh, would go easily and nicely without much effort. I mean, it's wishful thinking, but, um, you know, sometimes it's not very easy to, to you know, you, you never have a safety net, you know, you never know that you know, next two seasons already sold out because it's always getting filled during the season before. Um, so, so some things are known two or three years in advance, but I mean, this is something I sometimes wish, wish myself a bit more certainty on on that mm -hmm. on that account. And maybe that certainty can be found in your recent CD of Prokofiev, <laughs> one of well, your favorites. Um, we uh, we had some very nice reviews. Congratulations! Uh, thank you. We got a five-star review from uh, Jeffrey Norris from a Telegraph, who is a very a severe critic. Impressive. Uh, and it was chosen as it was elected um, editor's choice of the month at the Gramophone magazine. Congratulations! Which is also, hey. so now what we need is to bring it also to Israel. But at the moment, it's available on all the Amazon sites, on iTunes, uh, Agent V Tower Records. Excellent, so. Boris. We wish. All that you wish yourself and more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Big pleasure. Good luck and Cheers. shalom. Shalom.